Before you go on a rocky shore field trip, it's a good idea to familiarize yourself with what a quadrat is and how to make use of one. So what is a quadrat? A quadrat is simply a regular frame in the shape of a square that allows you to count various organisms. So as you look here, you can see that there is a square frame in the middle, as well as a whole bunch of lines that uh, usually fill the middle. Those lines often help you to count organisms that are quite small or otherwise to determine what percentage of your quadrat is filled with a particular organism. So the main purpose of your quadrat is to be able to count organisms. Obviously this is very useful when you're working in an ecosystem and you want to know something about that ecosystem, either something about the food chain or a food web or the health of the ecosystem. We generally use them to count organisms that are sessile or sedentary. Sessile organisms are ones that do not move. That's that word there. They are stuck, they are unable to move. Those would be things, for example, like uh, your muscles. Sedentary organisms are ones that are able to move, but choose not to. And those would be things like your anemones. They are actually able to walk over a surface, uh, but like an inchworm does, but they choose not to most of the time. And then, as I said, we often use it as well for estimating percentage cover. Where's my pen gone? There we go. Percentage cover. Uh, for example, if you're looking at seaweeds. So how does it work? Well, it's quite simple, really. Up here, this is the high tide mark. And that's where the road will be uh, on our field trip. And down the bottom here, this is where the low tide is. In other words, the very edge uh, where the rocks are and where the waves will be. What we do is we have a line down the middle called a transect. Uh, that's going to be a rope in our case. And that rope has markers on it that indicate the number of meters that you're going down the shore. Along that rope, you then take several samples at the same point. Then you move either up or down the shore, depending on where you are, and you take another set of samples move up or down and take another set of samples, move up or down and take another set of samples. It's really important that you do take several samples at each point, the reason simply being that you want to increase your reliability and you do that by taking lots of repeats. It's important to note that when you do a sample it's best to start down at the bottom here, at the low tide mark, and work your way up the shore reason simply being the tide is coming in and if you start at the top by the time you get down here to the bottom of the shore where the waves are you will no longer be able to reach the very bottom section down here um, we're hoping that we're going to be able to see not just the lower reaches of the, sh of the shore but actually be able to see the sub littoral zones as well uh, depending on how scared you are of the water and whether you're prepared to actually get in it or not. But we should be able to see the top of the sublittoral zone down here. But if you start up here with your sampling, by the time you get down here, that zone will be covered in water and you'll be unable to take your samples from that point. This is a photo that I took of the actual shore. Uh, this is a photo taken last year. This is the zone, this is the area that we're going to be in. And here down the, down the sort of right hand side you can see the white transect line leading all the way down to the sublateral zones down there. And as you can see there are people stretched out right across uh, busy taking their samples at various points along that transect line. So how do you count organisms? Well, it's very important that you remember that if something is 50% or more within your quadrat, you count it. If it's 50% or more on the outside of the quadrat, you don't count it. If you've got specific individuals, as you can see here, there is one brown seaweed, uh, there's a green seaweed. If you can see specific individuals, by all means count individuals. But if you can't, count what percentage you think those organisms uh, cover on the inside of your quadrat. Just make sure that whatever you do, you're consistent the whole way through. So if you're going to start doing percentage cover, you need to do percentage cover the whole way through. You can't have one set of uh, your quadrats being percentage cover and the rest of them being counting the number of organisms. If you do that, then unfortunately uh, you're going to have data that you can't really graph or, or do anything with. This is an example of a quadrat where you would look at percentage cover. The algae that you can see here are too small as individuals, if you were trying to 
to look at it to actually be able to see one specific individual. Uh, you'd probably need some sort of hand lens to be able to do that and it would take you too long to count them. So for something like this you're going to do percentage cover. You can see over here there's a patch of bare rock and that patch of bare rock there hmm, I would guess is probably about a fifth maybe a sixth of that whole area. There's a patch over there where there doesn't look to be too much of the seaweed and there's bits and pieces in between here. So I would guess that this is probably about 60 to 70 percent uh, coverage of this particular seaweed. Whenever you're doing your samples, remember the more repeats you do, the better. The more data you have, the more accurate you're going to be. And accuracy and precision gives you increased reliability. Also please remember that you mustn't harm any organisms. Minimal poking and prodding, especially where you're dealing with things like sea anemones or sea urchins. Seaweeds is not such a big deal, but the other organisms, the actual animals, you need to be very careful and gentle with them. Uh, finally, just make sure that if you do move any organisms, let's say you pick up a starfish uh, or you pick up a sea urchin, please remember to return them exactly to where you found them. You do not have a permit to remove these living organisms from their habitats and if we are found to be doing that we can get into serious trouble with the authorities. So please just make sure that you return whatever you pick up uh, and to be gentle with them. And lastly, remember to have fun. The day is all about having fun and uh, we hope that you certainly will do that.